Shenley Laboratories, producer of Penicillin Shenley and Shenley Pharmaceuticals, presents the Encore Theatre. The Encore Theatre play tonight, White Angel. Our star is Virginia Bruce. Tonight, Shenley Laboratories presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact. The struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction. Stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism or courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold in personal research or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms, whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. And now, White Angel, starring Virginia Bruce as Florence Nightingale. In here in the library, Mother. Florence, you aren't dressed. Did you forget about the lamb's dinner? Father, how can you go to dinner parties with all these terrible problems in the hospitals? Florence, you haven't been reading those reports I brought home. Yes, I have. Father, what's the cause of these appalling conditions? Well, for one thing, it seems to be impossible to get enough nurses. Now, Florence, we all know that there are aspects of life that we must all regret. Fortunately, we don't have to encounter them. Now, run up and change your dress, dear. We're going to be terribly late. Mother, there's a tragedy on every one of those pages. People are dying for lack of care. Haven't you any imagination? Doesn't it call on you for service and help? I'm only thankful, Florence, that I lead a well-ordered life in pleasant places and with beautiful associations. But, Mother... Florence, dear, I can't see why you should let yourself become upset. I'm sure that your father will do everything in his power to improve matters. You'll forget all about this as soon as you're married to Charles. But I'm not going to marry Charles. It's out of the question. Now, now, my dear, you're just a little upset tonight. Things will look differently in the morning. I'm never going to marry anyone. Charles is a very desirable husband. He's handsome, well-educated, good family. Charles is much more than that, Mother. Charles is all the things I used to dream about when I was a little girl. All the things any woman would want a man to be... And if I could limit my life to the confines of one small world, I would marry Charles, and I'm I'm sure I'd be very happy, but I can't. Why not, Florence? Because I, I want to do something bigger, something really worthwhile. I want to feel when I'm ready to die that I've contributed something to the world. You could be a wife and a mother. What more could any woman be? I'm going to be a nurse. I'm going to Sweden next week to train <laughs> How do you like scrubbing floors? I've done things I like better. I can't make you out coming all the way to Stockholm to do this. Aren't there any training schools for nurses in England? No, Minna. In England, they don't teach girls to do anything. Oh, what a wonderful country to live in. Ladies, you're forgetting the rules of the institution. Work must be done silently. Come, my probationers. I'm wanted by my patient in room 20. I want you to come along. Come on, Minna. We just sat down to eat. You can't eat if your patients need you. Come, girls. This is no time for dawdling. Let me make the bed for you, Mrs. Arnold. Certainly not. All you've got to do is look on and learn all you can. You're not ready yet for practical work. All we're ready for is chambermaid work, scrubbing and cleaning and everything else that's disagreeable. A very important rule in nursing is not to chatter. I'll carry these sheets downstairs. When may we we take charge of patients? After you've learned your ABCs. 
A course of dirty work makes the best nurses. Do have some more crumpets, Lady Anne? No, thank you, Mr. Herbert. As I was saying, I deplore all this revolutionary spirit on the continent. I do hope that Florence will get home safely from Stockholm. Mrs. Nightingale tells me that she's expected back tomorrow. How her mother must be looking forward to her settling down. Settling down? Hadn't you heard? Florence is determined to become a hospital nurse. A hospital nurse? Oh, you're not serious. I certainly am, and so is Florence. If she were my daughter, I'd give her a good whipping. Well, imagine mixing with women of the lowest order. So far as I'm concerned, I shall cease to know Miss Nightingale from this moment onwards. I'm sorry to hear you say that, my dear, because I shall admire her more than ever. She sets us all an example by her courage and independence. Any intelligent doctor will go out of his way to get hold of her. Particularly with war brewing on the continent, we need nurses more than ever. Florence, my dear, what are you doing here in the war office? Not thinking of joining the army, are you? Hello, Mr. Herbert. Yes, I am, if they'll have me. Father is in with the army board now. He took my application and... Don't be too disappointed if they turn you down. Why should they turn me down when they need me? Sometimes it's a little hard to get men to admit that they need women. Well, Father? I'm sorry, Florence. What did they say? They said that the medical staff at Scutari was quite satisfied with the male nurses that they had. They said that female nurses might appeal to the Frenchmen, but not to Englishmen. They wouldn't even consider the idea of sending you to Scutari, Florence. They're just being obstinate and out of date. Perhaps it's just as well, Florence. Think of the hardships you'd have to go through to get to the Crimea. It's a long way from London. They don't need you, Florence, but they thank you for your generous offer. They don't need me, Father. Look at this article in the Times. Fuller says, The sufferings of the sick and wounded are indescribable. There are no dressers and nurses. There are not sufficient surgeons. There's not even linen to make bandages for the wounded. The wounded were led to believe that everything was ready which could ease their pain. But it was found that the commonest appliances of a workhouse sick ward were lacking. How dare they say they don't need me when they need everything and everyone that can help. I don't know how much weight I can swing with the board, but I'll be glad to talk to them for you, if you like, Florence. How would you do that? If they will send you, it'll mean reorganizing the entire army medical system. You would be under the Minister of State and also under Lord Raglan, who is Commander-in-Chief. You'd have to work in cooperation with his medical officers. Are you sure you'll be willing to do that? I'm willing to do anything to help. Very well, I'll see what I can do. Done any nursing? Have you done any nursing? Well, I should think I have. I've nursed three husbands on their deathbeds, and I've worked at St. Thomas's Hospital and the Middlesex Hospital and Charing Cross Hospital. Sorry, you've been in too many places for me. Next? Yes, Miss Nightingale. What nursing have you done? None, but I've worked hard all my life. I've looked after a husband and several children. Oh, I know I'm not really experienced, but I can soon learn. I'm willing to do anything. You're willing to go to Scutari? Yes, Miss Nightingale. All right, report to the woman at the next desk. She will give you the necessary forms. Next. Oh, your sister Columba from the Order of St. Vincent, aren't you? Yes, I've been in charge of the infirmary at the convent. And I'm willing to do anything that's needed. Thank you, sister. We shall have plenty for you to do. Will you go over to Mrs. Herbert's table? She's enrolling the nurses. Uh, Miss Nightingale. Well, I'm sorry, we're only interviewing women nurses. Yes, I'm not a nurse. I'm a cook. I'm a chef of the Reform Club. My name is Alexis Soyer. And I would like to join your expedition. I know that for me also there's work at Scutari. Monsieur Soyer, I accept your offer most thankfully. You shall be in charge of the hospital kitchen. Uh, may I speak to you for a moment, Florence? Of course, Mr. Herbert. Come in, please. Florence, here is your letter of introduction to Colonel Hunt. He's the commanding officer at Scutari. You're under military discipline now, Florence. I understand. Colonel Hunt has been advised already that you're coming. I... I can't tell you whether he's pleased or not. I'm sure he isn't. We 
that communique, Dr. Scott. Did you ever hear of such impertinence? What the war office is thinking of? Sending a woman here to Scutari. Uh, who is this Miss Nightingale, Colonel Hunt? Who knows? Some female busybody. Oh, I imagine she's here mainly in an advisory position. Mm, what you can advise me about, I can't imagine. Mm, and I'm not going to worry about her. I always hope while there's the English Channel... She probably won't get further than Boulogne. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Colonel, but her boat is due in this morning. What? Uh, what hospital are you assigning Miss Nightingale to? This one. But we have typhoid cases here. She wants to be a nurse. I hear that chance to prove it. Well, why don't you assign her to my hospital until this typhoid epidemic is over? One can never tell with this kind of infection. Well, you'd better tell that to Miss Nightingale so she'll go home and stay home. Well, I think you're treating her outrageously. You're forgetting yourself, Dr. Scott. I think not, sir. You leave for the front. Immediately. Yes, sir. Orderly, please open those windows. We need some air in here. Don't do that, miss. The smell's so awful and the rats come in. When we've cleaned up everywhere, there will be no more smells or vermin. Are you the storekeeper? Yes. What can I do for you, miss? To begin with, I want a dozen mops, a dozen buckets... And all the soap, sponges, and floor cars we've got. I want 500 nightshirts, and I'll send some nurses over for them in five minutes. Give me your requisition, and I'll see that in due course it reaches the board of directors. A board of directors for a hospital store? Can't you give me these things yourself? The men are in such hideous discomfort, they, they can't wait another minute. I'm not allowed to issue anything till it's been passed by the board. I can't go beyond my regulations. I command you to give them to me. I've got my orders, and I'm going to obey them. I've got my orders, too. And when my nurses arrive here, you'd better give them their supplies. Well, I've come to make a complaint against Miss Nightingale, sir. What's she done? She's stolen 500 shirts and a good many other things, sir. She broke in with a bunch of nurses and took them. And you let her? I can't fight women, sir. Well, I can. I'm glad you came in, Miss Nightingale. I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you. You've avoided me since the moment of my arrival. I hope what I'm going to say may be for the good of the common cause we both serve. You don't understand. I'm an army officer. I know. And I'm a nurse. But I think it would be for the benefit of the sick and wounded if we could talk openly to one another. Now, what is it you want to say? Colonel Hunt, what makes you show this animosity toward me? Miss Nightingale, I appreciate the frankness of your question. I'm not opposed to you as a person, but I object to the idea of women nurses for the army. And why do you object? You make the men soft. Soldiers don't need to be coddled by a lot of women. We don't coddle the soldiers. We try to make their pitiful state easier to bear. There's nothing to pity. It's part of a soldier's life. Colonel Hunt, have you ever been sick or wounded? Yes, and I know what a man can stand. Is there no possibility of an understanding between us? None, whatever. I warn you that if you show any further insubordination, I shall have you court martial. Colonel Hunt, I'm here to work simply and solely for the benefit of the soldiers. I shall continue to do so in any way that it is necessary. Most of us are familiar with the miraculous result from the use of penicillin in serious infection. But did you know that penicillin is now used in preventive medicine as well? In cases of minor surgery, for instance, your doctor may administer penicillin in any one of several forms to prevent secondary infections. Naturally, increased uses for penicillin impose a demand for increased quantities. Shenley Laboratories is geared to do its part in meeting that demand. In addition to penicillin in its original form, Shenley has now developed such pharmaceuticals as penicillin tablets and proteas for administration by mouth, as well as penicillin ointment and ophthalmic ointment. As one of the world's largest users of research on mold and fermentation processes, from which penicillin and other antibiotics are derived, Shenley Laboratories has dedicated itself to a continuing program of investigation and study. It is our sincere hope and aim 
that this research program will result in the production of new and ever grating healing aids to place at the disposal of doctors everywhere. Now, the second act of White Angel, starring Virginia Bruce as Florence Nightingale. <laughs> During the weeks that followed, she became a legend. The soldiers that she nursed idolized her, and so did people all over the world who read and heard of her work. In America, a man named Longfellow wrote a poem, and in the writing gave her a title that would live forever, The Lady with the Lamp. She became a goddess of life and healing to officer, infantryman, drummer boy. Miss Nightingale? Here I am, Tommy. I'll sit by your bed a moment, shall I? Hold my hand. What's the matter, Tommy? You're usually in much better spirits. The doctor told him that he won't live until tomorrow, miss. I, I shan't mind dying if you're with me. Tommy, have you got a mother and a father? Sure I have. Well, then you think about them and how much they'll all want to see you again. I'll tell you what we'll do. Tomorrow, you and I will write them a letter. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Nightingale? He's still sleeping. You've been here all night? Yes. And look, his fever's gone down. He's much better. I don't understand. They didn't think he could live until morning. He's going to live. He's going to be all right. A little care goes a long way. Yes. And a little love goes a long way further. I'm glad he's better. I wouldn't like to leave for the Crimea as long as anyone still needed me here. Miss Nightingale, welcome to the Crimea. Oh, Dr. Scott, I'm so glad to see you. I need your help. The officials here won't supply my staff with any food. Who gave them such an idiotic order? I did. You who? Those were Colonel Hunt's instructions. I had no choice but to obey them. Colonel Hunt is going out of his way to be vindictive. You can't be expected to obey him. Oh, I don't dare fall foul of him again. I was sent here because I told him what I thought of him for putting you in the typhoid ward. If I disobeyed him now, it would mean a court-martial. I can't risk that. Well, I should think not indeed. It doesn't matter about me. I can always get along with a cup of tea, but I, I must do something about my nurses. They're, they're famished. Miss Nightingale? Yes, what is it? We've been refused admittance to the hospital. What? We are certainly not wanted here. Did you give that order too, Dr. Scott? You don't understand. I'm part of this miserable system. Your system may starve me, but it will never succeed in keeping me from my sick. I shall go to the hospital at once and demand admittance. Oh, who goes there? Florence Nightingale. I'm sorry, miss. I can't pass you into the hospital. Why not? Orders. I hope you go quietly back, miss. If you try to come in here, I shall be obliged to restrain you. Orders are orders. Then I shall wait out here till they are cancelled. In the snow, miss... In the snow. Dr. Scott? Lord Raglan. I've been informed that Miss Nightingale has been refused admission to the hospital. Was this done by an official order? Yes, sir. Where is that order, Dr. Scott? Here, sir. Pick it up. Yes, sir. Now tear it up. But, sir... I am commander-in-chief of the British Army. I said to tear it up. Yes, sir. Miss Nightingale? Yes, sir. I am Lord Raglan, commander-in-chief of the British Armies. My arm, madam. I will escort you personally into our hospital.
Gentlemen of the medical staff, I am deeply ashamed that such a thing could have happened in the army to a lady of our country. Colonel Hunt is to be relieved of his post at Scutari, and I want the entire army to know that I have said most emphatically that there must be no more of these petty jealousies. Thank you, gentlemen. That will be all. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, Dr. Scott, what is it? It's Miss Nightingale, sir. She's ill. She has the cholera. How do you feel today, Miss Nightingale? Better, Lord Raglan. I'll be up and about soon. Not too soon. I wanted you to know that letters have been pouring in from all parts of the world, concerned for your well-being. And this morning we had a letter from Her Majesty the Queen, sending her good wishes for your recovery. Thank you. Thank you. I... You're going home for a visit as soon as you're well enough. Her Majesty wishes to meet you. In her own words, she wishes to have the honor of meeting you. <sighs> Crying, Miss Nightingale? <laughs> That's not very soldierly of you. I know. Oh, but how very lovely it is to see that someone so much a soldier can also be so much a woman. <laughs> Name, please. Miss Smith. Anything to declare? No. Shall I open my suitcase? Oh, that's all right, Miss. Go ahead. Did you see what it says here in the Times, Walter? Yesterday, Miss Nightingale returned as Miss Smith to her home at Embley without anyone being aware that she'd even landed in England. Just like her, isn't it? Miss Nightingale wishes it to be known that she desires no reception celebrations in her honour. She would prefer that the money for such a purpose should be the nucleus of a fund for building training schools for nurses in England. She's a fine woman. God bless her. Florence, I could just cry. I spent weeks planning a gown for you to wear to see the Queen. I'm sorry, Mother. It isn't that I don't appreciate it, but I'm going as I am. In that old uniform. I'm going to meet her as a nurse, wearing the uniform that symbolizes my work. It's my work and its future that matters. Now, I'm sure the Queen won't want to hear your views on nursing. She'll like you to be pleasant. One or two anecdotes about the war, perhaps, but no opinions. Sir Herbert is waiting for you in the carriage, Florence. I'm coming, Father. Florence... At least do one thing for me. Please let the Queen speak first. This is Her Majesty's audience chamber in here, Florence. I'll take you in and then I'll wait for you downstairs. I think I'm a little scared. You don't need to be. I think you'll find that you and the Queen see eye to eye about a good many things. Miss Nightingale, I presume? Yes. Hello, Mr. Bullock. Florence, may I present Mr. Bullock, the permanent undersecretary to the war office? Indeed. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure, Mr. Bullock. It is always interesting to meet an adversary. You are one of the men who has been fighting me for two years, aren't you? I'm afraid you're mistaken on only one point. I'm still fighting you. Why? Because you're a dangerously progressive woman. Then, Mr. Bullock, you are not fighting me but the ideals for which I stand. Ideals which will inevitably undermine the system I represent if they are ever allowed openly to be put into practice. What do you feel? We cannot afford experiments. And we cannot afford to wait. Whether you wait or not will depend largely upon the decisions of Her Majesty the Queen. It seems only fair to tell you that I have already spoken to her regarding the war officer's attitude in this matter. I'm sorry to hear that, Bullock. It seems to me that it would be only common courtesy to allow Miss Nightingale to see her first. Miss Nightingale has chosen to enter a man's world. She need not, therefore, expect any quarter because she's a woman. I don't expect any quarter, nor shall I give any. I have been fighting a long time now, Mr. Bullock, and I know how to fight. 
There's no doubt about that. Well, Miss Nightingale, it's been most interesting to meet you and to have this opportunity of talking with you. Good day. Good day. It's almost time for your appointment. I'll leave you here in Her Majesty's audience chamber. She'll be in in a moment. That's a fine portrait of her. I think I'll practice my speech. I won't get stage fright in front of a portrait. <laughs> you go right ahead, Flo. I'll wait for you downstairs. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Your Majesty, I expect that Colonel Hunt has told you about the defects in my work at Scutari. No one knows them better than I. But the difficulties that my loyal nurses had to face were at times almost insurmountable. Whatever else I may have done during the war, I have shown beyond doubt that nursing is, is woman's highest vocation. It is for the future of nursing that I am pleading. All over the civilized world, the development of every branch of science is being furthered except the science of nursing. Nothing is being done for that. To be unprepared when the hour strikes is a crime. To be ready is the secret of life. I want to establish training schools for nurses, for the great army of women that is coming out of the future, ready and willing to take my vow. I solemnly pledge myself before God to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and will not take or knowingly administer any harmful drug. I will do all in my power to elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my profession. With loyalty will I endeavor to aid the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. Oh, Miss Nightingale. Oh, you, Your Majesty, I'm, I'm so sorry I, I didn't hear you come in. I'm glad you didn't. It was a fine speech. And I want you to know that not only do I appreciate the fine work you've done, but I shall do everything in my power to see that it continues. Thank you, Your Majesty. Miss Nightingale, it is with great pleasure that I present to you this brooch, the form and emblem of which commemorate your great and blessed work, St. George's Cross. And underneath are these words, Blessed are the merciful. May I pin it on your uniform? Your Majesty. England is most proud of you, Miss Nightingale. will bring our star, Virginia Bruce, back to this microphone. But first, may we leave this thought with you. Unlike most of us, a doctor can never forget business completely. Even when your physician is enjoying an evening away from home, he has previously left word as to where he may be reached in case of emergency. Yes, doctors are on call any hour of the day or night, and they're noted for responding to that call always. Shenley Laboratory salutes in this series of programs the spirit of constant service to mankind which characterizes the medical profession. Now, here is the star of tonight's play, Virginia Bruce. Women of America, today the need for nurses is desperate. If you are a high school graduate between the ages of 17 and 35, in good health, apply at the hospital nearest your home. Remember, nursing is one of the highest vocations a woman can follow. Won't you apply now? And may we invite you to listen again next week at the same time when Shenley Laboratories presents Now Voyager with Loretta Young. A great star and a great story. White Angel was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, who this year is celebrating the 20th anniversary of sound pictures. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. This is Frank Graham speaking for Shenley Laboratories. Producer of Penicillin Shenley.